found us. More podcast where we want you to know God more deeply. Find lasting freedom, discover your destiny and make an eternal difference. Now. It's happening now. Right now, as you are sitting wherever you are, I'm pretty sure that I heard you this week ask for more. Sure, when uh, you were sitting in front of the TV, you remember that whole situation and you said to yourself, I wish there was more to my week. Well, recently licensed by the FDA, we have the secret recipe to give you the more that you've been looking for. Uh, No need to worry about all the side effects that others promise. We just give you more Jesus, more truth, and more things to be grateful for. Uh, You know, that's called the GMO. GMO? Yeah, God Modified <laughs> Organization says what we are. <laughs> yeah, right. I like that. You can't uh, grow that at home. No, you cannot. <laughs> you have to have an FDA license to do that. Um, but uh, you've heard voices already in studio today. We have Pastor Gary. Woo-woo! And we have somebody else that's here today. Yes, brand very new person. special guest. He goes by uh, Critter Commander on the weekends. Yep. But normally his wife calls him Dave or Davey. Davey. Davey Bachelor. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, Dave Bachelor's in the house today. How you doing? <laughs> yeah, Welcome. I'm doing fantastic. Thank you guys uh yeah we we robbed him from all of his other previous gigs and KLT and everything else ankle breaks let off then we were good to go <laughs> yeah right he was able to get out of his house now <laughs> yeah you know it turns out they're they are waterproof <laughs> yeah right <laughs> you can't get rid of it well and the only person that still thinks Elvis is alive me Pastor Alex Norton here in the studio welcome you guys how old were be- you when he died uh, I was real young 17, I think I was yeah. about 12 yeah I was and that, I remember yeah. the night he died yeah, uh, we were sleeping out in our uh, tree fort, and uh, we kept ri- going into the house and stealing all of the uh, barbecued chicken that was in the bag <laughs> in the kitchen all night long. We just every other song, Elvis is dead. Yeah, it's like, come on, quit saying it. Yeah, yep. it was a sad day. I mean, I remember as a kid, you know, my grandmother playing his gospel albums like for mm-hmm. a week mm-hmm. of all of his gospel hits. Uh, yeah, it was pretty bad. Any day of the week, if you walked into my grandmother's house growing up. You would you would just enter the house and everything Elvis. I mean, yeah. there were oh, postage wow. postage stamps. There yeah. were pictures on the wall. She had every figurine, everything, everything Elvis. Well, Elvis you used disturbing. to be able to buy a velvet Elvis at a garage sale for real cheap. Not yeah. anymore. Right. <laughs> Not anymore. eBay. I saw one on there for eighty bucks. Mm-hmm. A velvet Elvis. So, this <laughs> is coming. Big. Do you come think back. it was like? It, obviously, his music was great. Yeah. Right. But he's a, he was a handsome guy. Yeah, for sure. So, so do you think your grandma had like this little crush going on? I think so. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Like I, you know, and she did some dancing back in the day. So okay. I'm pretty sure that had some correlation okay. there. Okay. Well, compared to what, how he danced to how people dance today in music. Yeah. It was a far cry. I mean, it was, it was pretty much Christian. Right. The way he danced. <laughs> totally. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't bad at all. But man, back in the day, you know, people thought they were going to hell in the handbasket if they listened to Elvis and watched him do his thing on stage. That little leg shake thing. The little leg shake. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe mm. I'll try that next time during worship <laughs> service and see how hey, that flies. Hey, there you go. Do it. Wear the bell bottoms. I think I you should wear the one piece jumpsuit. Come up there with the collar that's yeah. like this tall and yes. the wings come way down. Oh, yeah. As long as it's red, white, and blue, I'm good. Get okay. up there and then have it be dazzled. Have your wife be dazzled for you. Yeah. Shimmery. So when the lights hit it. Oh, right. it just sparkles. That <laughs> just says it. worship to me. It does. Yeah. <laughs> Sequins. Mm-hmm. You can go into glory, glory, hallelujah. Uh-huh. Start taking me, off with let it. Let me tell you this, my little mama. <laughs> <laughs> and then throw your uh, handkerchief off into the crowd. You know, it'd be like a Benny Hinn's uh, are, service all of a sudden. People are crying. <laughs> Look, look at this guy. He is just the perfect podcast guest. Yeah, he is. That's he what is. I, I think it's great. He's got all these persona. Well, he was, you know, he was a star on KLT for a while. So we got him on here. Oh. So it's actually like bringing a movie star <laughs> okay. into our podcast. You know, so. the the radio advertising uh, that I used to do, I used to write, voice, and produce, and sell radio advertising for the rock station. And it was a great job. Yeah. I had a blast doing it. was able to be creative. You know, they'd uh, pull me on once in a while to just be a dork or, you know, myself. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, you're probably uh, the most famous person we've had on this. Yeah, show. I think so. Oh, I think so. I, don't I think know so. Uh, so we can we start getting that? You know, like get a picture of us with him and then start putting it up on the wall. Yeah, here right, with all yeah. the guests that we've had. <laughs> I like that. And have you sign the picture? Right, put oh, it up geez. there. Yeah, right. I like it. That's a good idea. Uh, well, we did have uh, your your uh, was he nephew uh, Parker? Yeah, Fairborn is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's your. Yeah, he's, he's my, my yeah yeah kind of my nephew by marriage yeah yeah we've had him in there so that's yeah. pretty we've had some yeah. some big names yeah, yeah. first state representative that was pretty awesome that was a pretty big deal yeah, yeah we actually had him on the podcast uh, talking about things it was it was pretty good yeah and yeah, I felt pretty Parker's a great guy yeah. yeah yeah it was it was a good situation 
All right. Well, Pastor Gary reminded us of uh, some great shows last Sunday as the topic of his message uh, was remote life push and record. And, and you did the bumper with all the the shows that I grew up with. Right. And some that I, was I there, just was watched. Was there one on there that caught your attention? Uh, <laughs> Scooby-Doo. Yeah, yeah, no, that was, was a good yeah, one. That was, that a, good was one. a good one. I was trying to think of all of them, but I just I was sitting there just watching. Them, I'm like, I watch those now. You know, uh, on some right. of those channels that uh, show all the old classics. I got to tell you, right now, I could sit and watch probably 10 episodes of Hogan's Heroes and never be bored. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if every show is exactly the same, it's written the same, same right. way. But I loved Hogan's Heroes. It was good. They're always trying to escape. Yeah. Yeah. It was just so much fun. Uh, there are a lot of shows from the past that I reminisce about and think. Of course, people from yeah. the crowd gave a big... I could hear audibly yeah. them say, red, green. Red, green. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know you said that. I'm like, <laughs> where are we right now? Yeah. Uh, it just shows you how many people used to watch PBS. That's what mm-hmm. it is right there. That red green show duct tape. Yeah. He had a couple books out too about duct tape. I remember yeah. getting those and yeah. Watching the uh, red green show. Well, I thought it might be fun to reminisce about the shows that define generations of TV viewers. Uh, I was looking to find the five most VHS home recorded shows that oh, have okay. come up that people thought were the best thing ever when they could record shows. Cause without a DVR, you really can't do that anymore unless you get a digital version of it somewhere. So tell me if you remember these. These are their top five. Now, I didn't make this list. This was made by, oh, I think, excited. IMB. Okay, so number one, coming at number one. Are you ready for this one? 1987 to 1991, the case is an undercover police unit composed of young-looking officers specializing in youth crime was 21 Jump, Jump Street. You remember that show? Never watched it. No. Never watched it? Just oh, the movies. Just the movie. Yeah. Well, that's where uh, Johnny Depp got his, you know, his uh, TV oh, that makes appearance sense. started. Uh, was on 21 Jump Street. That was the number one show that was recorded on VHS tapes in America during that period of time. Wow. 1985 to 1992, The Ventures of a Secret Agent Armed with Almost Infinite Scientific Resourcefulness was... MacGyver. 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 Yes, that's number yeah. two. Okay, that's number two. Yeah, most my recorded. favorite. My favorite episode is when he carved a canoe out of a pencil. That was my <laughs> favorite. One. He he had a beautiful mullet. It he was did. Flowing. I mean, that guy was so funny. I mean, I was. I would watch that show and I'm thinking, I could do that. I actually did try to do something like that. Uh, <laughs> I took a vacuum cleaner into my bedroom when I was a kid and uh, stripped uh, some wires and put them on the ends of a plug. <laughs> Because I thought I could make that. Uh, I can't remember what it's called in science, but you make that arc go across the wires. Yeah, it's I tried welding. To, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah right. it's a really good way to burn <laughs> yeah. stuff. And that's exactly what happens. Is I plugged it in and it shot a spark onto my cat. The cat caught on fire. <laughs> no, for real, for real. Yeah, I was trying to jump onto that the screen to get awesome. out of the house, and it shut down our entire house. I blew all the fuses. You're my hero. Yeah, and my dad comes in, and you know, first thing I notice is his belt's coming off, and I'm like, oh, here we that, go. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's going through each belt loop. Yeah, right. Yeah. He, he turned into knew. Jackie Chan all of a sudden. He you know. already knew it was he's, you. He's like, Alex, you burnt the cat again? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oddly enough, the cat never came back to me. Uh, it was my sister's cat, actually. But uh, yeah, I, I came caught up with my own MacGyver thing. So did you? I took, a little, you I took a little speaker out of a, like an old radio or something like that. Yeah. And then I ran the wires to like a nine volt battery. And depending on how much power was left in the battery, it would it would vibrate. And so I was able, I made my own battery tester with a speaker. Oh, see, that's, yeah. that's oh, perfect. Wow. Yeah. But it was a lot safer than, it was a lot safer down. than what I was doing. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, it's funny you talk about batteries because last Sunday when we were in the green room, uh, uh, Don, uh, uh, Schreiber. Schreiber, thank you. Uh, old age is kicking in. Don Schreiber, he, uh, was talking about the batteries, not putting the batteries, mm-hmm. uh, near metal because it'll burn the place down. Mm-hmm. And I said, you know, what we used to do back in the day is just stick them on our tongue. Yeah. Yep. That's, and see if we go numb or not, then we know how much power is in there. I still do that to my kids. Right, yeah. Here, try this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and if your <laughs> and if your tongue goes numb, then you're you're fine, right? So you can always tell too. Protective too. services yeah. will be for that. <laughs> visiting the bachelor's house. You can tonight. always tell immediately. <laughs> yeah, right. Like Jack will take one and he'll be like, "Oh, yep, that one's good, Dad." And I can tell by his face before he even opens his yeah, mouth right. to tell me. But uh, yeah, <laughs> depending it's a fat on how tongue, wide like, yeah, are. that was a good one. Yeah. I appreciate it, that. It's weird when he starts doing it again and again, and yeah. I told him to only do it once. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Hey, this is a gateway drug. Don't do it. Yeah. Uh, okay, so MacGyver. So, yeah, so that was a great show. A lot of people were into that. That's number two. Number three was for only one year, but it apparently was a big hit when it came out. I don't know why they didn't do any successive series. But 1985, a deskbound cop secretly fights crime as a test pilot for a prototype combat motorcycle. Do you remember this one? Street Hawk. Never. Never. Never? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Number three. Number three on the list of of things people tried to. What year was it? 1985. 
Okay, so I wasn't born yet, so that's so probably, it's probably why. Yeah, really? Oh my gosh. Sorry, guys. I'm sorry. 1985. Yeah, Street Hawk was, was a fun show. That was but three years before me. Well, oh, he would man. shoot rockets out of his <laughs> his motorcycle. I'm like, the rockets Whoa. are bigger than a motorcycle, so it was always fun to see how that was going to happen. It's like Spy Hunter. Oh, it was awesome. Yeah, and he would drive around, and that motorcycle would go anywhere you wanted it to go. It didn't matter <laughs> what was going on. So, okay, that was a good one. Okay, so that was number three. Number four. From 1984 to 1986, as part of a deal with an intelligence agency to look for his missing brother, a renegade pilot goes on missions with an advanced battle helicopter. What is this one? It's a, was he in like an A-10? Um, I, I don't even know what it was, but it's a cool looking. No, it was a, it was a. Kind of looked black, like a was, flying killer whale. It was an Apache. I think it was an Apache helicopter. Nope, you're thinking of the other one, oh, the other okay. show. Okay. This is Airwolf. Oh, yeah, wow. I've heard of that one. The other one is Blue something, Blue, Blue Streaker, I don't know, something, Blue uh, Thunder. This one was Airwolf. Days of Thunder. I do remember <laughs> Airwolf. <laughs> that's a totally different movie. Oh, yeah, that's, that's right. That's right. Uh, Airwolf. Yeah, this guy would. You know, he lived in the mountains of Montana, and somehow he got this this helicopter into one of the mountains, and that was his secret hideout. Yeah. And then you'd, you know, he'd get the phone call like, "Oh, we need you to come over here and do this." So he'd fly out, and then he would take out the bad guys. It was so cool. He probably shopped yeah. at a uh, General Jim's Army Surplus. <laughs> yeah. That's probably where he picked that up. Yeah, that's right. 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 Yeah, it was a prototype. Uh, look, like I said, it looked like a flying killer whale. It was kind of kind of cool. Hmm. All right, the last one. I'm sure you're going to get this one from 19. Well, you weren't born yet, but 1983 <laughs> to 1987, four Vietnam vets framed for a crime they didn't commit helped the dun, innocent dun, while dun, yep, dun, on the dun, run dun. from the military. Who is it, Pastor Gary? It's the A team. The A team. That's right. And of course, you got Mr. T. Yeah. You know, what I was didn't his, miss that show. What was his favorite line? That's right, fool. That's right, fool. Yeah, you didn't even watch it. That's right, fool. That's right, fool. <laughs> he had a, a bunch of gold chains on half the time. I don't even know how he oh, carried yeah. that around. Yeah, so that was that was number five. That's on right, the fool. Recording. It's a mohawk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he brought the mohawk back, you know, into style at that point. I think it was because of him. A lot of people got mohawks. Doesn't he, isn't he a believer? He is. Yeah. He actually, I don't know if he does it now, but I remember in the late 90s, he was on like all the Christian shows, mm -hmm. like TBN and that stuff, talking about his uh, his salvation experience and what he was doing in the movie industry. He, he wasn't making many movies anymore, but he'd go around and talk to the kids in the inner city and talk them about changing their life. The interesting thing is when you watch the show, I mean, the guy looks huge, right? Yeah. He's like buff. But then when you start seeing him talking, he's like a little skinny, <laughs> tiny little old man, you know, really? with the mohawk. Yeah, yeah. Kind of lost his uh, his mass, you know, the way he used to look. This big dude. And, and let me tell you, Dave, I'm just letting you know, when you hit 50, yeah, literally the muscles disappear off your body. Yeah. What? It yeah, is. I'm it's not true. joking you. You hit not. 50 and all of a sudden they just disappear. You haven't done anything different. Right. But you just have no mass left in your shoulders and your biceps are like sticks. I'm going to call... Uh Sylvester Stallone, I heard that he has a remedy for that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, because he's like 80 and he's jacked. Yeah. I mean, come on. Let's be honest. I mean, sure, he's, he's poking himself with it's testosterone. Just, or just yeah. his face on somebody else's I body. I think it yeah. rhymes with HGH. I'm not yeah. sure. Come on. <laughs> There's no way a guy that old 70, what is he, like 70 years old, looks oh, better than when he did when he was in Rocky? Well, I mean, I wouldn't know. I don't know about that. His face looks like it doesn't move. <laughs> well, his, yeah, his face. But I mean, his muscles and stuff. Oh, yeah. he's Because you ever watch The Expendables? Mm -hmm. Oh man, he's jacked. He's he's yeah. huge. I know. And Dolph Lundgren looks like an old catcher's mitt walking around. <laughs> <laughs> the guy used to be mammoth, and now he's like this little tiny old man that carries around a big knife all the time. It's like, come on. I love it. All right, we're gonna take an ID break, and we'll be right back with you. Hey, you want a s'more? S'more what? No, no, you want a s'more? I haven't had anything yet. So how can I have some more of nothing? You're killing me, Smalls. When hiring a contractor to tackle your next housing project, hire someone who knows what it takes to make it exactly how you dreamed it should be. With over 25 years of success, Sean Meyer Construction brings the know-how to tackle new or exciting projects. Get rapture ready with your favorite host today, Pastor Gary and Pastor Alex Norton, as they come to you with information that you need to make it through the times coming ahead and more. Almost sounds like a beginning of like uh, the Jack Vanippy show, right? Yeah. With Rock Cell, well, I want to know from Jack the Critter Vanippy. Commander, the, the Critter Commander, I want to know, do you have your own theme music and stuff like that for your show? 
You know, we uh, we actually sample music okay. often, and okay. we've used things like Prince. Um, would you like us? <laughs> would you like us to create for you your own I Critter you Commander should. commercial? Yeah, I think we should. Okay, because so. we're going to get some wild animal sounds going in here. I think we should. Okay, yeah, it's going to be good. I think Let's we should do that. that. To the, do you have anything that we can give away? Yes, from your we business? need swag. You know what? I think I can come up with something. I think okay. we uh, yeah. we actually started doing some hats and some. Oh. Uh, Coffee mugs, like travel mugs, there you go. similar. Not not like the Yeti ones because those are those yeah. are high. high right. class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we like we try to keep it a little lower class because yeah. you know we, we do some dirty jobs. But okay, yeah, I think look. it'd be good. I, I think, think you got. I a think point we've there. got something going. I think we should do it. <laughs> Uh, okay, so we're especially, in restaurant. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry, sorry Pastor, just, yeah. Especially because if you come to um, Harbor Light on Wednesday nights, we're doing the uh, Agents of the Apocalypse class. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm reading a verse tonight uh, about the um, the four horsemen. Yeah. Okay. And the last guy comes, and, um, and then all of a sudden, wild animals are eating people. Oh, really? Yes. So I'm looking forward can, to this. I can make a commercial about... The Book of Revelation and the Critter Commander, all yeah. in one thing. Oh, I it like would be that. Great. I think you should do okay. it. I think you should do it. I wonder uh, if I could catch one of the horsemen. I heard they look pretty gnarly. Yeah, <laughs> take them down. We're he's, taking them down. He's got a lion head. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, is like, come on, man! I gotta yeah. come down sometime. I got this. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So, rapture ready news. We're going to be talking about uh, just one subject, which really just got my attention this week. Uh, according to the news uh, that's out there right now, The Wire, Biden is not moving with urgency to prevent World War III is the headline. And uh, the chairman of the new House Committee on China is warning that the window of maximum danger for Taiwan will open in January 2024, which is when Chinese President uh, Xi Jinping will seriously consider a potential invasion of the self-governing island. Uh, Chairman Mike Gallagher of uh, Wisconsin Republican is also warning that the Biden administration is not moving with an appropriate sense of urgency to prevent the war, a uh, World War III to happen. If he were going any slower, he'd be going backwards. With, <laughs> He's not? <laughs> Am I going too slow or faster? No, no, no. Yeah. Biden, Biden. Oh, response. yeah. If he was going any slower, I know. he'd be going backwards. It's like, come oh, on, man. man. Come what on, are you doing? You know, it's well, the thing. It's the thing. <laughs> yeah. Where's man. my chocolate chip ice cream? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. We were watching that current events with, with President Biden uh-huh. going to Ireland. He gets off of his little handshake thing tour in the town that he stopped off with. The only thing that he had on his mind the whole time was to go to the ice cream shop at the end. They set it up so that he walks right into the ice cream shop to shake hands. And all he wanted was ice cream. And then once he gets his ice cream, he just walks out. He doesn't yeah. say hi to anybody. He just leaves. You know what? I'm, I'm pretty sure. I'm 100% sure that he got butter pecan. You think so? I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Most old people do that. I think so. Uh, I have some friends of mine that claim that uh, it's not an age thing, but butter pecan is the favorite. I'm mm-hmm. like, it is an age thing. Because after a certain point, all of a sudden, butter pecan is the favorite ice cream of most senior citizens. Really? Oh, yeah. Hmm. By far. I would lay gospel bucks on that today. Okay. That there are more per capita seniors that like butter pecan. Definitely. With praline, over anything else. Pralines, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, because the other stuff is too much, right? It's too much, like, flavor. They just want basics. And color. Yeah. And color. <laughs> <laughs> right. If it's orange, no, we're not going to. No. Napoleon uh, ice cream went out with, you know. Napoleon. You remember that? The, the pink, white. It was a Neapolitan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Napoleon. That's oh, that's what, what I, I used to call it. Napoleon, yeah. <laughs> oh, Neapolitan. <idiot. laughs> ne- Eat the Pastor food. Alex's reading skills are yeah. coming to the surface. Here. Hey, uh, what am I reading right now? Okay. So Russia, Europe, and China, uh, as we're finding out in the news, are rising uh, to power. They're starting to get their armies back into place. And the, the weirdest thing that I have heard this week is that uh, uh, the Ukraine wanted to buy diesel fuel from Russia to take care of the tanks that they have. And so Russia is <laughs> selling them diesel fuel at a premium. This is the weirdest thing. I heard it on Fox News this week. I thought, am I listening to the right news article? And apparently Russia is selling diesel fuel to Ukraine in a war that they're fighting against each other. It's about to, money. Yeah, man. it is about money. It's all about money. doesn't make any sense to me, but yes, it would hit the news line. So something to think about. But anyways, uh, so we realized that Russia, Europe, and China are be- beginning to replace America's status. Even India has stopped using the dollar as their main currency. They're using yeah, ruples. It's true. So they're going to pay all of their bills, all their debt with ruples now. There's, they're not using anything. On, like on, most, on several continents now, they're doing that. 
Yeah, it's it's just crazy. Uh, the verse that comes to mind, uh, I think Dave, you already brought it up, is Revelation sixteen twelve that speaks of a time when the kings from the east, which is referring more to Russia and China, uh, will be coming uh, associated with the sort of a Chinese army coalition will take advantage of the removal of a major natural barrier that we just found out this week is at an all-time low. Uh, and it will sweep westward to meet up with the forces of Antichrist uh, in the end times uh, dialogue that we have in Revelation. Uh, a couple of facts that came out of that is that we just found out this week that China now has created a 200 million man army, mm-hmm. which we know is referenced in scripture. Correct. Yeah. So they have already enlisted 200 million men to get ready for battle. We're not really sure what they're doing with them. Nobody really is putting that out on, on any of the news wires, but we think it's going to be something with Taiwan. But 200 million men are being prepared for battle. And also, the barrier that is now almost virtually gone is the Euphrates River. Okay. Right? It's yeah. virtually gone. They had to shut down all their power plants they were using for water, mm-hmm. uh, the water power plants. Uh, the water is so polluted now that people aren't even able to use it. And one report says that you can't even put a canoe in, in certain parts of the Euphrates anymore because it's too shallow. Yeah, and it goes through, I believe, Turkey, Iraq, and Syria. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's crazy. Yeah, it's causing serious droughts and... And mm. honestly, uh, you know, anything they did grow. Right. And, you know, plus it's super polluted. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, I, nobody wants to drink it. They can't use it anymore. And that used to be the only water source, freshwater source for millions of people. And so now that's that's gone. And uh, But that's going right along with the lines of Revelation where the one barrier, natural barrier that keep people out of that area moving towards Israel is the Euphrates. And that is basically disappearing. They say basically in the next four to five years, the Euphrates will be nothing more than a trickle. Wow. So that's something to think about that we're that close. I mean, we're not, we're not talking about 200 years from now. We're talking about the next five years is what people that are probably not even Christians are saying this is a major problem. I've right? seen it on uh, even Al Jazeera's covering it. I mean, it affects their area, uh, you know, and, and whole civilizations are built on water. Yeah. Yeah. On water. They're even finding civilizations lost that was under the water. Yeah. Hmm. That was there that yeah. had been under the water for so long. And now, yeah, they're finding pottery and all these different things. Ar- archaeologists are saying that uh, I was just uh, sharing with Dave before the program that they're finding uh, homes and cities that nobody knew existed that now are revealed because the water is no longer there. Oh, wow. Okay. So that's a, a brand new thing. And people are dying to get in there to figure out what civilization we're looking at. Mm-hmm. We, I mean, we have some ideas based on history, but it's just interesting. Um, the STS news source says that due to the high, this is how they deal with it. That are not Christian. They say due to the high rate of global warming in the world it's believed that an environmental disaster is likely to be encountered as the Euphrates is drying up. So they're not saying it's a, a biblical thing. They're saying that it has to be with global warming, mm-hmm. which we all know if we read our scriptures, uh, we realize that this is a, this is a God thing. This mm-hmm. is not a, a global warming thing. Uh, but I, it just blows my mind to think that all this is lining up right now as we're talking on this podcast. The 200 million men, the uh, the Euphrates uh, drying up. Uh, what's some of your thoughts on this? You're the, the revelation guru for our church here. What, what's some of the th- st- thoughts that come to your mind on that? Well, I think that you guys are setting it up perfectly. And it's not just, it's like on every front or every issue, you can see the prophecy being fulfilled right before our eyes. And yeah. so, you know, as a young man growing up in a church like this, where we've been looking for the return of Jesus, um, you know, it was always like, yeah, it's going to be a little ways out, right? A little ways out because you didn't see all these things happening. But now they're all happening in unison, all together. And uh, it should be uh, driving us to uh, be excited about Jesus' return, but it also should be uh, pushing us to evangelism, making sure that our friends and family know Jesus Christ. And so, yeah, it's happening everywhere on a massive scale, and it's just super awesome. It's undeniable. Yeah, yeah it's undeniable. Yeah. That's the thing. That's the key word. I think you got it. Yeah. People always ask, you know, well, what proof do you have? And you're like, well... You know, how, how about we just let history speak for itself right. yeah. and the future and things that are happening right now in the present are leading to what the Bible says directly. Right. And I think that, you know, we're talking about very specific indicators, mm-hmm. 200 million men. Mm-hmm. I mean, that just didn't pop out of nowhere. Right. right. It's falling along the lines of this idea that we find in scripture. Uh, if you're not believing that there is a God, that there is going to be an end time, that there is going to be a rapture, all this other stuff you're fooling yourself because all you have to do is see that it's there referenced in our scripture. 
very specifically, same thing with Euphrates, very specifically talking about that river area and even the Tigris coming together. Uh, those those rivers are mentioned but in I, our scriptures. I really like that because, you know, our biblical prophecy is very specific. You take like, uh, you know, predictions of Nostradamus and those guys, they're just so vague. Mm-hmm. You know, at some point in history, they're going to be fulfilled, you know, but these these are very specific with location right. and, and numbers, numbers and all those kind of things. Yeah. 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 And I think that's, uh, it's interesting. Even some of the secular news media, they're always, they're starting to call it a biblical problem. Like it's a mm-hmm. biblical issue, mm-hmm. even though they may not necessarily agree with it, but how else can you really describe these things that are happening in front of us? And you're like, mm, it's just a coincidence. It is not a coincidence. If you're sitting there right now thinking to yourself, I wonder when Jesus is coming back, you better just be paying attention very closely because things are lining up very quickly uh, moving forward. And, I, you know, I would love to think, and I, I believe this in my own heart, that, you know, Jesus could come back in my time. Oh, uh, he could be 100%. here. Yeah, totally within with my time. And there's so many other things that are lining up with the scriptures that we've talked about previously that uh, just make it seem uh, ironic, uh, more than ironic, that uh, the stuff is happening. It's it's something that God prophesied is going to happen. It's terrifying to a lot, but it's also, it should be exciting. Yeah. It, oh, and yeah. I mean, we hear Pastor Gary talk about it on Sunday. Mm-hmm. You know, he's, are you ready? Get ready, because it's yeah. going to happen, and you should be excited about this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, things are scary to read about, but... At the end of the day, yeah. Jesus is coming back and we are getting out of here. Yeah. yeah. Yep. That's <laughs> I mean, exciting thing. Yeah, we should not be fearful. I mean, it just it should be a confirmation to us. You know, for those of us who have been reading scripture for so long, it's like, hey, something's actually moving. Mm-hmm. We're actually getting somewhere. Because uh, I know a lot of generations <laughs> didn't think it was going to happen. You know, it's it like, it real. Yeah, we're, when is this going to happen? And, and in our lifetime, we're seeing some major things move into place that no other generation has ever seen before. Yeah. Which is an exciting thing. So um, just something to keep on your radar uh, with all this stuff going on with China. Be praying, I would say, for our president in this whole situation as, uh, you know, this could be a major war if we are not careful. And uh, definitely, you know, all of our young men and women in the military that are on the on the front lines with this whole thing, uh, just be praying for them as they're uh, maybe stepping into something. Your son serves. My son serves in the Navy, and they're, they're talking about getting him over to Taiwan now. Yeah. You know, getting them, get the boats around there to prepare for what could happen. Absolutely. So, you know, that's, that's a mild ramp up, you know, just basically just showing some power. But, you know, when you're possibly dealing with 200 million men <laughs> crossing the natural barrier towards that area, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Well, we're going to take a quick identity break, and we'll be right back. Are you looking for more? Well, then you found it right here on More Podcast. Stay tuned. Looking for a go-to eatery that has awesome food? Well, Paper Station in downtown Harbor Springs is sure to have your next favorite. From their signature station burger to the golden crispiness of a hand-dipped onion ring, enjoy the flavors that make this a must-stop today. Paper Station. Well, we're right into our Harbor Light Bible trivia question for the week. Uh, if you're wondering uh, what was the question last week, it was simply who rolled rolled the stone away at the tomb. And we did not get a lot of feedback on this one. I really? think people thought that's too easy. That, we, we just know it, yeah, you know? Yeah. So we did have a couple, uh, Linda Murray and Ben Butnick, they, they wrote in and told us the answer. It was Pastor Gary. The angel. The angel. The angel rolled back the, the stone and uh, got everything started with that whole uh, thing happening with Mary and everything else. Uh, you know, I didn't think it was that, that easy. I mean, but maybe, you know. Well, we'll give you, you know, we're going to give you a challenging question this week, right? Okay. We're going to give them one. You got something? Uh, oh, no, great. I don't know. We're going to pull it from the cards. <laughs> we have the cards in front of us. Uh, we're going to make them think a little bit. Um, but uh, we had two two people, and so they're going to get some swag from us. So it's just amazing. Uh, the winner of last week, last month's Bluetooth speaker was Joe Tath. And uh, it's funny because I gave it to him on Sunday, and his wife said, you need to quit talking about my husband on the radio. Oh, really? Why? Yeah. Because he's getting a big head. 
That's what she said. <laughs> oh, come on. He's a big dude. Anyway. Yeah, he, yeah, he needs it. Yeah. And she's like, quit talking about him because every time you mention his name on there, I have to hear about it for the rest of the week. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, he's just, he's a popular guy. You know, we love him. Totally. Uh, so yeah, he got the Bluetooth speaker. Uh, he answered uh, enough questions, get in the drawing, and then he was pulled there. Uh, so if you're wondering how you get swag, we got all kinds of swag, and you just heard it here first. The Critter Commander is going to be putting some swag in the the pot for the rest of us. So that's going to be some some cool stuff. Uh, but if you're wondering how you get on this big question or the uh, the question for the week. Uh, all you have to do is write to Harbor Light, Me- uh, Harbor Light Bible Trivia at gmail.com, Harbor Light Bible Trivia at gmail.com. It's all lowercase. And send us your answer. Now, as I mentioned last week, we do not make fun of you if you don't have the right answer. So send whatever answer you think it is. And I will not mention that you could not get it <laughs> on the air. That's a really interesting you know, a little disclaimer here. We well, were not going to make fun of you. I think people yeah. think that. Okay. You know, I think, you know, somebody wrote, you could have wrote in and said, well, I think uh, Mary used the crowbar. Uh, <laughs> I, I, we're not going to say that online. <laughs> we're not going to tell you that that was uh, Mandy Garber who said that, but <laughs> it, was, uh, it was people that, you know, mentioned this idea, you know, that they're, they have an idea what it is, but they didn't know and they'd send it in. Uh, we will not do that to you. So send a, your answer to Harborlight Bible Trivia at gmail.com and I'll get you your swag. We still have some great gifts to give away, and uh, but before we go on any further, Pastor Gary is now pulling out the awesome card for this week and the question that we want you to answer, and Pastor Gary, take it away. All right. Well, I'd like to actually maybe go toward the book of Revelation because we're having so much Ooh, fun yeah. with this Rapture Ready stuff, and um, so I'm going to try to think of one here. So, um, hmm, hmm. Here it is. Hmm. So... What is the phrase, Mm -hmm. where do we get this uh, word rapture? Because the word rapture is not found in the Bible. So where do we get that from? And there's a little two-word phrase that uh, is translated into Latin that we get the word uh, for uh, rapture out of that. So where is that located? How about that? There you go. That's a good one. Located in the text. Yes. Where is it located in the text? Uh, uh, But I will give you a hint. I'll give you a hint. It's not in the book of Revelation. So it's going to be somewhere else in the New Testament is where we get this word for rapture. Here we go. Ooh, Uh, That's that's a tough one. That's going to be a tough one. A lot of people are going to be Googling it right now, trying to figure that one out. Uh, So where do we get the uh, word rapture in the text uh, that we use to describe uh, in Revelation? Um, But uh, if you have the answer... Send it to Harborlight Bible Trivia at gmail.com and uh, you could possibly uh, win some swag. We do have a lot of stuff. We have hats. We have, we still have one more cheese card left. Really? From Sean Meyer Construction. Okay. With a $25 value on it. So maybe, maybe we should give that to the, the studio guest today. Oh, that's a good idea. I think that's a really good idea. I think <laughs> Dave needs some cheese. You eat cheese? I do. Are you not lactose intolerant, right? I mean, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> there are some side effects. Right? Yeah, right. <laughs> but it's worth it. Depends on if I'm eating butter pecan ice cream or not. Yeah, right, yeah. Uh, Dave's really like, I just love this gift. It's awesome. He's so sitting good. on the toilet. Yeah. Where's Dave at? I yeah. don't know. I haven't seen him in hours. <laughs> Your wife's going to be calling us. Why did you do that? Uh, yeah. So we'll, uh, okay, so the cheese card's out. Let's give it to the guest. Let's give it to the guest. Cheese card's going to Dave Batcher, but we do have oh, other geez. gifts. We do have other gifts. Yeah. Uh, I've got some shirts. I still have a dress shirt from from uh, uh, Joe mm-hmm. Lucier from uh, his uh, his company, uh, Waterfront. And it's pretty nice. It's a pretty nice shirt. Yeah. So I, I want to give that away to somebody. We have some of his awesome sweatshirts. We got a lot of stuff. You guys have cool stuff. We do. We have we have uh, Hamill uh, flooring uh, cups and mugs and all kinds of stuff. I still have a hat from him. So, I mean, w- you know, we used to have these beanie uh, hats in here. And uh, Which we have about five of those at my house now. Right. We, we thought, well, we're never going to get rid of these because winter's over. But hey, guess what? <laughs> Here we are. Winter has been extended <laughs> through June. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, I want to pay you to kill that little rodent. If you can, I will uh, work that out. You go over <laughs> Ponchatani. What is it? Ponchatani Field or whatever. Oh, yeah. yeah if you would, If you would assassinate him for me, I would pay you for that. I have no idea what you're talking about. So. <laughs> <laughs> I have a very specific set of skills. I know. <laughs> <laughs> That that stupid road, it's gone. Um, anyways, we're going to take an ID break and we'll be right back. Well, here's how to have more. Know God more deeply, find lasting freedom, discover your destiny, and make an eternal difference. You're listening to more podcast. Hey. 
It takes time and know-how to build your dream home. Why not consider waterfront property management and builders to make your next property a reality? Your dreams, your way, that's a waterfront team promise. Located in downtown Lansing, Michigan. Well, has the winter done a number on your beautiful floors in your home? Well, Hamels Flooring, with their expert touch of Cliff Haas, is sure to have an answer for you. With a large exclusive collection of carpet and vinyl flooring, your floors will look better than new. That's Hamel Flooring here in Petoskey. Well, this last Sunday, uh, Pastor Gary, uh, you and your current series on remote life, uh, Push and Record was the header or the um, the concept that we were looking at. We've talked about different ideas about pushing something on the, on the remote. Uh, and you talked a lot about the Christian journey being more than getting people saved. Instead, it's uh, creating a lifestyle that people want to record or be more like the Christian who is making claims about their faith. I uh, use the well-known passage of scripture from Matthew 28, 18 through 20, but you highlighted a phrase in that passage that we oftentimes overlook. And I wanted to read that passage real quick before I turn over the mic to you to, to take over on this one. Uh, Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 through 20, it says, Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you, and be sure of this, I am with you always, even to the ends of the earth. Now, here's my question. What was the hidden nugget in the text that you mentioned that we often gloss over in that text? It's the uh, process of making disciples. Making I think, disciples, uh, yeah. I think we've been uh, kind of taught over all of our years to make converts, you know, just get someone to say the prayer, mm-hmm. and, uh, and then just kind of drop the mic and walk away is that kind of that little idea there. Yeah. And that is not what we were commanded to do or... Yeah, well, actually, the word is commanded because he says, I've got all authority of heaven and earth, and I'm giving this command to you to go make disciples. So that's the concept that we're going to focus on. We wanted to kind of bring a spotlight to the responsibility we have and the extra work that it takes to make disciples. That's not a one-time, one-and-done kind of deal. You've got to uh, build a relationship with Mm -hmm. a person. And I encourage you to do that by taking interest in people that have the same interest as you. Uh, let's make it a natural kind of thing. So if you're into, uh, you know, hunting, hang out with some hunters. If you're into uh, quilting, hang out with quilters. Uh, if you, um, you know, if you're a mom, hang out with other moms. Mm-hmm. You know, have those things in common. That makes the relationship sustainable. Yeah. And, uh, and then it, you'll always find a way to be able to weave in your faith and a conversation and uh, so that but that takes time right and so instead of doing something you have to add on to your life Mm -hmm. let's make it something that's already in the flow and uh, the disciple making um, I I had a friend uh, who was um, uh, a person from India and uh, he ran an orphanage in uh, India and he actually took the words of this uh, command so seriously that Mm -hmm. he would uh, make a disciple before he would make them into a convert. Oh, wow. Yeah. He did it the reverse of what most people do. It takes a lot more work, but if you do it correctly, the, the conversion is a natural process. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he worked super hard to make them a follower of Jesus and a student of Jesus. And when the time to surrender their life to Jesus came, it was just an easy type thing. Yeah. I like the whole idea. That's that's awesome. I remember um, uh, when I was just uh, starting out in the ministry, I had a, a pastor, uh, come to me and say, you know, hey, how's your devotional life? That's how it started the conversation. And so he would get with me on the most, the weirdest places. We'd be next to a river. We, it was in Iowa. Or we'd be sitting at a coffee shop. We'd pull out our Bibles and start talking about like text or whatever. But it started that way. And then it turned into relationship, friendship, and then uh, just continued on. And it would always be this accountability uh, relationship, you know, as we're working through things we're reading or whatever, I still have the notebook, the first notebook that I, I filled out with them, you know, writing things about the scripture, writing about things that how Holy Spirit was speaking to me about certain things. Um, and that was a really uh, intense discipleship program for me. It was something that I really got into. And I started using that myself with other people, you know, getting to know them, starting out with, uh, you know, talking about the Bible, moving into this, this relationship. So it's a little bit different than what you're talking about, but uh, still the idea is that we're trying to bring them along in the kingdom. Um, yeah. And he, he told me, he says, you know, the, the best thing you can do, you know, I talked, I know you gave another image on Sunday, but it was more of this coaching mindset. Like I'm walking with you mm-hmm. on this journey. I'm not trying to lead you along, but I'm walking with you. Uh, and I thought that was a really cool thing. And it really got me, you know, moving in the right direction. 
Um, Dave, uh, you've you've been in discipleship, discipleship experiences. Uh, do you have a story for us that you share? You know, God has been doing a lot of things, and I just shared this with a buddy of mine um, that I served in the military with, and he's a good friend of mine that I hunt with. Um, so when Pastor Gary's talking about, you know, incorporating – you know, Jesus into your life and, yeah. and, and talking with guys and gals that you're already involved with and you have similar, you know, likes and hobbies, it really does happen more naturally. Yeah, it it's does. It's not weird, you know, because um, they know you and you know them and you know, you know, you feel more comfortable with each other to start. Um, but God has done some pretty amazing things in the last couple of years of my life uh, that's added to my testimony mm -hmm. that has allowed me to have something more. Mm -hmm more yeah i like that nice time <laughs> to, in there nice yeah time. you like that yeah to share yeah. with um with others and you know i'm very open about uh, my belief in the things that he's done in my life you know just just uh one quick story my son recently had a um a really awful experience uh where he had to go to the emergency room here in town and he had uh some really serious uh, medical issues going on in his gastrointestinal tract and he had to be rushed four hours away down to uh, DeVos Children's Hospital. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, he was set to have surgery. They told us when you get there, the surgical team's going to be waiting for you. This is going to happen. And, uh, you know, be prepared. Yeah. They took him by ambulance. We got down there. Had to put all life on hold and our other two children up here on hold and find someone to watch our house and our animals and our kids. It was really crazy. And, uh, you know, we got down there, got ready, got him ready to, to go in for surgery and a doctor comes in mm -hmm. and this is shortly after we just so happened to run into pastor Gary and Lisa yeah, Kay that's awesome. at the hospital yeah. <clears throat> at a, a hospital hours away from home, Yeah, you know, and here they are. And it was such a blessing because they were able to come back to the hospital after they left. And we realized that they mm -hmm. actually saw my wife in the elevator. <laughs> oh, really? as so, the door was closing, I saw her walk past. And oh, like, that's Brooke. It's like straight That's out of awesome. a movie. That is awesome. Well, it, and total God thing. And I say that about this kind of stuff. I say it's a God thing, you know, and because that's just, that's just too much. Yeah. And, and, and they came back, they came up to Jack's room and laid hands on him and we prayed for healing. Yeah. And shortly after they left, because Lisa Kay even said when she came in, she said, hey, you know, I heard them talking at the desk that... They're getting ready. Like mm -hmm. it's getting ready to happen. This is yeah. going to happen. So we got to be quick. Let's pray. Yeah. And we did. And when they came in, they said, um, you know, they asked some questions. The first doctor came in and he said, I, so how long has this been going on? You know, is he still complaining of this? Like, does he eat things and it causes this, uh, you know, cause, cause, uh, yeah, that's just, that's interesting. And then he leaves after we answered his questions and then the surgeon comes in and says, so he asks a few questions too, because he's kind of got this baffled look on his face and he's like, huh? He asked some similar questions and we yeah. said, uh, yeah, we answered. And he said, well, um, your son's not going to be having surgery. Really? It has corrected itself. Oh, that is and awesome. So, and I just look at him and initially I was angry. Yeah. I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> and it was so funny to look back because I'm, initially as a father, you know, you look at it and go, well, you're not doing enough. Yeah. You yeah. need to look again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Find a problem. Yeah. So so this was really for me too. Yeah. And and testing my faith because, you know, we, we prayed and everything, but I was ex fully expecting him to have surgery. My prayer was for a good surgery. Yeah. It wasn't it, and I realized later it wasn't necessarily for the healing that we wanted. It was for a good surgery and everything to go well and recovery, yeah. thinking ahead. Yeah. But no, no, no. God stepped in and said, We're gonna do this right now. Yeah. He's not going to have surgery. Yeah, amen. And it was it was amazing. So I get to share stuff like that now. God has put these things in front of me, you know, and I've got many other things. You know, my wife just got baptized recently. When we met, you know, she wasn't a Christian. Uh, she was a believer. But, you know, I, I just have prayed for so long that that would happen. And, you know, I reclaimed my life for Jesus. Um, you know, I've lived a lot of life. I got baptized when I was eight years old. Mm -hmm. um, and I've lived... <laughs> two lives since then. Yeah. So, you know, it was time for me to reclaim um, my life for Jesus and to wash away, you know, all the filth. And yep. here I am. And, uh, you know, he's just been adding to my testimony. And I, I mean, now I'm, you wouldn't have caught me two years ago singing worship songs yeah. on stage. Yep. I've, I've been terrified, you know, and something's been holding me back. And, you know, I recently went through free life, which I recommend to everybody. 
I don't yep. care how long you've been a Christian. Yep. Yeah, how right. comfortable you are. Yep. It's time to step out. <laughs> well, and just Absolutely. think about how those uh, opportunities now tie into you being a discipler, mm-hmm. right? Because mm-hmm. you can use those stories to uh, let people see, as Pastor Gary was mentioned on Sunday, uh, a reflection of you seeing your recorded life played out in front of other people and yeah. saying, hey, look how God's changed me. I know you mentioned that you have a lot of friends that have been a part of the military with you or that mm-hmm. um, people you've served with. And and that those are the things that began to bring them along as you, you talk to them about your faith, uh, began to tie into you, um, tie into your story, tie into what's going on. And God uses that to, to build a relationship and eventually moves you forward. One of the things that I want to... Uh, <clears throat> bring to the surface here is that uh many times when you have these friendships you're gonna you're gonna do life together there's gonna be things Mm -hmm. that happen right and then you don't have to you know like pull out the butter knife and just spread a little jesus on whatever's going on yeah you actually get to insert uh the word and the relationship with jesus right into the actual situation that's happening you don't have to make up some kind of like you know hypothetical right you know just just go ahead and apply the lord right to the situation so i had a young man uh, a number of years ago that was kind of lost he didn't know what he was going to do it made a career change and he was a little lost and so he uh he, he said hey can we get together and talk about this and i said sure so we we pulled out the 40 days of purpose book oh yeah right? yeah and we had um we had breakfast together every morning except for sundays every morning six days a week and we read through the chapter we read through that book together while i had chocolate chip pancakes and <laughs> no joke and uh we got to the very last reading and yeah. he still had no answer yeah. but he had gotten all this all this wonderful word and discipleship and uh, he and i talking the very last page of the the lord revealed to him what he was going to do that's next. awesome and yeah. he's wow. doing it to this day that is awesome. And it has found fulfillment. So, you know, there was a situation where I didn't have to make up something. Right, yeah. He was lost at the moment, yeah. you know, with directionless. And then we just applied some scripture to the situation, and the Lord worked it out in a super miraculous way. Yeah. That is so cool. Yeah, you're right. It's, and I gained yeah. 40 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> hey, those pancakes are awesome. Nice yeah. Sure. Well, you know, you, yeah. remember the, you remember the pancake house or the Americana down there in, yeah. Co- in Conway? Oh, yeah. I just drive it into the road. And, <laughs> Chocolate chip pancakes every morning, six days a week, wow, 40 days. And that I'm overweight. Beautiful. And now I'm a diabetic. Thank yeah. you very much. <laughs> Here's some diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's all for you, Jesus. All for you, man. I'm a diabetic for Christ. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I think you're right. I think it's a very natural, organic thing that happens when, when God starts working through a situation. I don't think we ever see in Scripture where somebody has to put on a big show and a pony show, a a song and dance to make somebody believe in Jesus. It happens naturally as they begin to see somebody's life unfold before them. And there's something about that that connects them to the story that you're sharing, the the testimony you're you're bringing. I really appreciate that because um, we do see some miraculous things happen in Scripture, but they were the result of something already going on, right? And um, I think there's a danger when we try to put on something, and Mm -hmm. then all of a sudden now we're like going to help Jesus out because he's not performing well enough for us under the spotlight, right? Yeah, Yeah, you can't force it. There you go. So let's let's all be ready to flow when it it presents itself. It has caught me by surprise almost every time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, almost every time, and it's like whoa, and yeah. it just it's I can't describe the feeling. I mean, it makes the hair on my arm stand up. I oh mean, yeah, yeah. Just, well, and it's something that you you know you see happening uh, that it seems like Holy Spirit's orchestrated without you even knowing that it's going to happen, and all of a sudden this relationship begins to start going on. I remember you telling a story about how some some kid or guy came over to work on a car with you. Yeah. And eventually you started sharing with them about their faith. And, <laughs> it was the craziest yeah. thing ever. So I'm working on this 1950 Chevy pickup and I'm cutting off stuff underneath, you know, so you put a grinder in a guy's hand and say, you know, take that off there. Right. Yeah. And uh, he would literally stop in the middle of doing the job and he would be like, so you're telling me God's real. And <laughs> it would be, the, it was like the, whoa. The, it, yeah. And, and then, you know, tell me how I can know that for a fact. And then how can I have a relationship with them? It yeah. was just almost like, like it was the easiest witnessing thing yeah, I've ever right. done in my life. Yeah. Like, am I set up? Is this a setup? Yeah, here? Because, look, cameras the right now. Camera, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it was, he was, it was the Holy Spirit working in his life. And, yeah. and, wow. um, he was just under there throwing sparks and having fun. Yeah. It was awesome. You know, the times that I, I've seen it not work. It's like you mentioned this on Sunday, just getting people saved was, you know, you remember people handing out tracks all the time 
and putting tracks in the bathroom, putting tracks on the table. Uh, it seems like it always backfires on people when they do that because uh, it, it seems to go against the whole idea of Jesus' premise for going out into the world. Not the sense that you just kind of like put a billboard out and say, you know, read this and you get saved. The fact is that you get to know that person, you connect with them, and that's how salvation is transferred. Mm-hmm. Um, because I think you could spend a lot of time doing that and thinking you're doing something for the kingdom, but you're not really building any uh, eternal relationships with these people um, because there's there's nothing there. It's just, uh, you know, words on a page. I, I think people, uh, I remember living in Chicago, no matter where you walked on the Michigan Mile, somebody was handing you something about getting saved or getting to know Jesus or whatever. And uh, a lot of times I just ask them, like, you know, have you actually saved anybody? And they're like, no, no, no. We just stand out here and hand these papers out <laughs> by the hundreds, you know. And then you'd see them all over the place on the streets. And I'm like, well, you know, uh, just asking questions about have you ever discipled anybody? No, no, no. We just, all we do is hand out tracks and just share Jesus this way. I'm like, mm, interesting. Yeah. yeah. It seems to be kind of a, uh, a way of getting out of the, the relationship because I, I think when you're talking about being a disciple, there's a one aspect of doing what Jesus said as being consistent in your faith journey that is a mirror for other people to follow and see themselves in it and something that they want to record, see the recording of. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and jump in here at this point because in the second service, I was able to bring this idea out. I missed it in the first service that um, when we look at scripture and we're, t- we're called to make disciples, there's a lot of people that I know that begin as a disciple, right? So they're mm-hmm. learning and want to mm-hmm. become more like Jesus and they're getting a lot of information, but they never make the jump and they never make that transition to becoming the discipler. Mm-hmm. And uh, so then they get bored, yeah, they get bored, they get oversaturated. I don't know if that's even possible, but they get oversaturated with things of the word because they're not giving out, right? right. And then they start to die on the vine. They start to dry up on the inside. And um, and so I just hung out with a young man not long ago, and his dad has lost his faith. And this, mm-hmm. his dad was like a really remarkable you know, disciple of Christ. Yeah. And he's now starting to come back online. But the point is that uh, you can you can get bored Right. Right. But when you're teaching someone else, you get inspired, you get life pumping back through your veins as you're helping them grow. And the other, the other danger that can happen is that uh, we can get bored with the basics. And then all of a sudden we start making up stuff. Mm -hmm. We're we're trying to find hidden mysteries that aren't even there. And, uh, and that can be dangerous because then now you're going way off the trail. Mm -hmm. And uh, so those two things are really dangerous. And I really think that it's important for us once we get um, the basics down in our life. It's time for us to transition to becoming the disciple makers. Right, we all yeah. start as disciples, but make become that disciple maker, and um, that will keep you alive. And you will mm-hmm. be making a tremendous difference in people's lives, and it'll keep you from getting in, into trouble. And we read that passage from yeah. Hebrews that says, "You guys have been saved long enough. You should be teaching others." But instead, you know, you need to go back through the basics, and uh, you're immature, and you need milk instead of meat. Right. And uh, that was a really powerful um, message that I wanted to try to get across um, on Sunday. Day. And thanks for giving me the opportunity to be able to uh, yeah. expound on it. But there's a, I, I think you're I think you're totally right. There's a lot of people that uh, walk their faith like that, and they've been sitting in church for you know years, and and there's no um, there's no work involved with it. It's just just Stagnant. just receiving. Yeah. yeah. Here's another danger that um, that happens. So so let's say I've been discipled, right? I got the word inside of me, but if I'm not living it out, if I'm not putting it into application in my real life where mm-hmm. I've opened up my life a little bit and said, go ahead and take a look and, and see how I'm doing it, right? How mm-hmm. I interact with the word in life. Um, when when my life doesn't line up with the word, yeah. I just have head knowledge. And I don't have the application in the heart right. knowledge. That will be a turnoff, right? That's the hypocritical yeah. message that we give to the world. Um, they want to be able to see what you believe and what you what you act yeah. line up, right? And that scares a lot of people away from making that transition to becoming the discipler because they know down inside they're not living out what they what they have in their head. Yeah, yeah, I think you're totally right. Uh, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back, Pastor Gary. Keep that on your your uh, your mind there because we've got some questions regarding what you just said. You know, don't settle for insurance that won't cover your toys, home, or auto. There's a reason that Wilson Insurance is an industry leader in Northern Michigan. They're not in the business to sell insurance. They're in the business to be there when you need an agent most. That's Wilson Insurance. Petoskey. You mentioned uh, in your your um, sermon on Sunday about how the idea of a, a disciple is a lot like being like the rabbis we talk about in scripture. Uh, and, and it seemed, I don't know when you're talking about, it, it seemed like uh, people were more, a little more receptive to the model back in the day 
as opposed to now, because we seem to be really self-sufficient on our Christian journey. Like, you know, um, I love people when they say, you know, the only person who needs to teach me is the Holy Spirit. I don't need anybody else to teach me. <laughs> that's, a dead, you know. that's a dead ring, uh, you know, red yeah. flag right there. The moment yeah. you just say, I only submit to Christ, you're, you've already given a right. show in your hand. Right. Yeah. And that, that's what I, my, my question then is, do you think it's easier or harder today to make disciples than in Jesus' day? Well, um, we talked about this at my small group the other night. When it comes to um, the pace of life, that seems to be one of the things that people say, I'm too busy to be able to be making disciples. Well, you know what? I didn't have to haul in um, water from the back creek. Right. You know, I've got <laughs> yeah. the pretty pretty nice, you know, advantage to be able to hit the spigot and water comes out. Yeah. I didn't have to catch my own food necessarily. I am eating venison For now. steaks. Right. Yeah, so, right. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> but that, you know, but the fact is my pace of life is fast, but it's no less than what people had during that particular time. Yeah. So is it harder? Well, maybe there is a culture um, that was alive at the time of Jesus where these rabbis were walking around mm-hmm. and uh, and they had little groups of people that would be, the, be their disciples. Yes. Maybe, maybe that's not going on today like it. It probably was, uh, but we have so many incredible resources mm-hmm. that can help us. So most people didn't have a, a copy of the Torah. Right. Okay, it would take a full man's wage for a year to buy a copy of the Torah. So we'll just say forty grand mm-hmm. for, for a Bible. Yeah. Right. Each of us probably have ten of them at our house. Right? Yeah. Right. You've yeah. got the Bible in front of you. So in some ways, in some ways, it should be easier. Mm-hmm. Right. Than it was during that particular time, but. We're probably living in a time where we are more self-focused than yeah. any other time in history. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, right. yes. Well, and everything tells you to be that way. Right. Yeah. self You deserve it. Yeah, you deserve it. Self-help. You're entitled. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This yeah. is, you deserve this. Yeah. Why? <laughs> what gives you that? I mean, yeah. you know, and it's it's funny. Um, I really liked what you said in on Sunday about... Um, religion and the the difference between religion and a relationship mm-hmm. yeah, yeah and that religion you know you're you're following things become religious when you're following rules you're following a set of rules instead of really focusing on a personal relationship with Christ and when you do that you don't have to follow the rules because you're living the rules every day and right. it's just kind of entwined in your in your everyday yeah it's written on your heart those tablets yes. are written on your heart yes yeah. and i think you know back Back in the day, back in Bible times, you know, um, when when the apostles were like preaching to people, they were like traditional Jewish people. They were, you know, mm-hmm. that's what they were going up against. Now we're going up against lots Paganism of things. Of I mean, yeah, right. either nothing, they believe in nothing, yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, yep. that there is no such thing as anything like that. When you're dead, you're dead, and that's it. Mm-hmm. So live it up, man. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's a huge thing. That's it. It is. And that reflects out the culture perfectly. Go ahead. You're doing right. great. Yeah. And then and then you have other things inserted that we're seeing now um, with, you know, you can be anything you want. Yep. Yeah. We are many. Yep. Where have we heard that before? Right. I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying, like, there's so many things thrown in our face and in our kids' faces. Yeah. Because the next generation that's coming up is is seeing all this coming at them all at once yeah. to be whatever you want to be and you deserve this and and you don't need God you don't need that there's nothing after this mm-hmm. just live it up and party be whatever animal you want to dress up like today and it's great <laughs> yep you're gonna yeah. do just fine here's a rainbow cape yeah right yep. and and live out yeah live out your your true self or what you think it is right yeah and it doesn't it doesn't it can change every day yeah right, right yeah you know I just think I. I yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and I think that you're right. I mean, we are fighting against a lot of things. And unfortunately, some of those premises and ideas have, have filtered into the church. Because mm-hmm. uh, there's there's the reason why, you know, Pastor Gary has to preach sermons about against those kind of things. Because, you know, self-reliance on us, uh, interpreting scripture so that it makes us basically um, a demigod in the process of us being more like God, even though people want to say that that's really what's happening here is that we want to elevate ourselves to this position where we don't need anybody else to do anything to teach us, tell us anything because, you know, I we're get connected. To determine everything. Yeah. I can determine everything. I know exactly what's going on. Uh, I, you know, in, in the, the role of the pulpit and the pastor has become so much of a joke nowadays where people are like, I don't even need the pastor anymore. I got the internet, YouTube. I can read the Bible for myself. I don't need anybody to interpret this for me. I'm, I'm, you know, I can do everything on my own. This is huge, especially for me. Okay. Mm -hmm. I I didn't go to church for a long time. Now I was raised in church and I've always believed, you know, I may not have put God at the front of my life for a long time. And, you know, I'm not afraid to say that everybody knows who knows me knows. And, you know, 
when, when I got back to, I was like, you know, I'm, there's no way I'm ever going to church again. I don't need church. Like those people, those mm-hmm. people, those people, this, those people that I don't need that. I just need to me and God. That's all yeah. I need. But when I really started focusing in and a lot of it happened when I developed my relationship with my wife and started a family was what, I mean, we can't just do this on our own. I mean, the Bible calls us to fellowship with others. Yeah. And once I started accepting that and realizing you don't go to church for the people there, I don't care if it's the elders or the other people going there, the pastor, God, I love you guys as pastors. You're amazing. <laughs> and I, I love it. And you're anointed and it's amazing. And, but when you go there to get the experience of Jesus and mm-hmm. around other people who are living for Jesus, it's something special. And we need that to be yeah. fed properly in yeah. my opinion. I mean, yeah, you're right. I love we have these guests come in there. They just tee it up for me, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. So good. There you go, Pastor Gary. Go for it. I'm Genesis, just like this. Yep. Oh, you yeah, can't yeah. see, but I'm opening my heart right now. There you go. Genesis 1, right? Or Genesis 2. It, it, God sees Adam. He's all by himself, and he says, this is not good. Right, yeah. He says, that's the only thing in the creation that was not good was the fact that he was alone. Yeah. Well, think about it. It was just Jesus and Adam. Yeah. I only need God. Just me and God. <laughs> That's yeah. not good. Yeah. The Lord himself would say, that's not good. He needs someone else. He needs yeah. community and he needs the help. That's great. Thank you. Yeah, yeah that was good. No, thank uh, you. Uh, way to set it up for him. I, I, I mean, a home I'm run just, for Pastor Gary. I'm just honest. I mean, I'm pretty out there. People who know me know that I'm out there. <laughs> As a matter of fact, can, we, can I tell this little story? So I've known this guy since he was just a little guy, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> and, um, and so I ran into him. Actually, we never even talked, but I saw him at this uh, feed store and uh, he was the first person I ever saw open carry. Okay, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, oh, my gosh, I know that guy. And I was just so proud of him. Look, he's open carry. Yeah. And he was talking about some six-point he had just shot, right? Yeah. And uh, and then the fact that we're friends now to uh, to the place where he'll call me up and say, hey, I'm going deer hunting. I'm like, let me pray for you right now. Yeah, yeah right. You know, yeah. And he shoots the biggest buck of his life. And then he calls me. I mean, one of the first people you called. You were. I yeah. got I yeah. got down from the tree stand and I'm like shaking trying to yeah. get the guy to say, Hey Siri, call Pastor Gary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, but he is uh, he is the real deal. He's yeah. a person who's just gonna let it out there. His life is gonna match up with his with yeah. his word. That's true. And uh, that makes me proud to be his pastor. Yeah. And uh, it was really fun, I gotta tell you, it was really fun on Sunday to call myself a rabbi. Yeah. Right. And 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 some people are kind of looking at me like you're stretching it right now. Yeah. <laughs> But you know the rabbi means master teacher, right? That's right, yeah, teacher, yeah. And I am your teacher. You are, and uh, so uh, it was kind of fun to be able to to get people to to jump into that particular. Way I think it's great. It was, I have two. Really I have things that I love about both of you, and yeah. I know you've heard me say this. And when Pastor Gary gets going and he gets on it, and he's just fire. He's yeah. spitting fire. That's what I call it. And he turns and he goes, "Ooh, that's good preaching." I just <laughs> love that. I absolutely love it. And then Alex will turn to you like a Southern Baptist minister and go, yeah. "And that's what Jesus." Wants. <laughs> the Lord is with you. And he just throws his hand out and he bends over. And I'm like, oh, yeah. And I just love it. I'm standing in the back. And they're like, oh, yeah, keep it coming. Let's go. I'm like one of those guys in the audience, like, come on. Let's go. Come on. <laughs> oh, man. Well, we have a good time today on this podcast. Uh, thank you, Dave, for being here. Yes, thank, thank you. you. A lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Pastor Gary, for enlightening us again on the, uh, this last week's and sermon. And thank you to Lisa K for sending in the cookies. Oh, uh, no that's one right. could hear it, hopefully. Uh, oh. But we've been <laughs> the rappers. cookies the entire This is, this is this what I hear. This is like a four-cookie show. Yeah. All right? That's what I keep hearing the are whole these, time in my mind. Are these molasses? <laughs> yeah. And it's funny because I'm, they're looking at me like, keep talking because we're eating right now. Keep <laughs> talking. He keeps handing me. Yeah. Pastor Gary keeps handing me cookies. I'm like, dude, I just ate two. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, where did my cookies go, man? I had cookies up here somewhere. I need to oh, check my sugar. <laughs> we are now diabetics. Thank yes. you. Yeah, it was a wonderful thing. Uh, thanks again for being a part of this podcast. And uh, we'll look forward to hearing from you and sharing your answer uh, to the Harbor Light Trivia. Harbor Light Trivia, uh, Harbor Light Bible Trivia at uh, gmail.com and send that in to us and uh, let us know what you think the answer is. And we promise that we will not make fun of you. <laughs> We won't. We won't. I. You guys are making me laugh. Making it sound like so. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not going to do it. I promise. Uh, but we'll talk to you next time. We want you to know, find, discover, change with us. More podcast ending transmission now. 